I think we're actually like we talk about age and like aging. I think we're chasing the carefree dynamic. Well, as way more responsibilities now tom, too. So much more like and the the ma- like life has more magnitude and like you said, yeah. responsibility and accountabilities. And, you know, I think that's maturing is like meeting those responsibilities as they grow. And I have moments where I, you know, freedom is like my core thing. And sometimes I confuse freedom to like, I'm not responsible and I'm not accountable and I just get to go do whatever mm. the fuck I want to do. Yeah. And, but I think maturing is like, no, freedom lives within all these responsibilities and being accountable. And and so I think it, it to me, it's like a, it's a natural maturation to go through that. But I think it's... Um, mm, that's true. I agree. You know, I... And, man, the early 20s, what a time. It was great. You know, where you, you can be... I'm not going to lie. It was fantastic. Yeah. And I think it's, it's more accepting that that is what that is. And it's like meeting the new... You know, there's new seasons of life. It's like, how do I lean into what this season is? And... Is mold. this winter? Shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is this fall? I'm not sure. But I think we're, the more we're honest to what is the current season of our life, the more we can accept it, the more, you know, then it's like, then it can be more joyful in a way that's like, you know, we meet the challenge as opposed to, I don't want to face this challenge. I wish it was more in this capacity. But I, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's healthy to go through, like you said, a, a mid, like, you know, crisis and kind of go through switching into how we, how we view things. But I always, I always think... You know, I hear Va- Gary Vaynerchuk talk about it a lot. Like, would he trade? He would always give up whatever he has now to go back to like for youth. And I always find that an interesting thing. Like, I, I, I would someone else say that. I wouldn't. I love where I'm at now. It's like I youth, wouldn't either. Youth, I think, had its own anxieties that I forget were there. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, uh, so like I, you know, what am I going to do with my life? Who like, am I? Who am I? Like, what? You know for me and you know I think it could still be later on in life but like societal pressures are a lot more intense I felt like at that age into like what I should be doing what I like to actually even I didn't know I think as I got old I've gotten older and I can't wait to be 75 and know who I you know have a closer yeah. vantage point of who I who I am or what lights me up like I'm all you know I feel like an watch infant. the generations below you yeah you know there's that you know I think about in a culture that rejects aging, it means it rejects the wisdom that is locked in the acceptance of your age. Do you know what I'm saying? 100%. Like if you escape the, the chronological clock, then you actually reject the wisdom that comes with chrono, chronology, whatever the word is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And don't send me a message telling me how to say that. There's something about that. And you know, I had this interesting, because you were talking about thinking about our bodies, thinking about our health. And I think for a lot of people during COVID, that was became top of mind. Mm-hmm. But then for a lot of other people, the government never said, take vitamin D, <laughs> take vitamin C, mm-hmm. take care of your health, lose weight, because you know obesity is one of the main comorbidities. Age is one of the, I think that was the number one comorbidity. Anyways, all that to say that when I, through COVID, I think just due to the stress and all the things that happened, I probably put on like 15 pounds. And- in the coming back to really prioritizing my health, food, all those things that I had this uh, awareness. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on it. I had this awareness that I was often praying or thinking, I don't want to die. Or like this fear of, let's say, a cardiovascular event or just something random like my grandfather had, right? Mm-hmm. Just like thinking, oh, I don't want that to happen. And that could happen at any time. It's, it's at the forefront, but you're trying to avoid it. Right. Like it's, but there's also this unconscious slash very conscious recognition that if I don't actually take absolute responsibility for my health, that is actually a thought that can perpetuate. Mm-hmm. It can always be there, of course. But if I'm not making choices that are pro-life, then that's going to be a more uh, conscious thought. And so I, I had this recognition standing at a urinal, which is where some of life's greatest recognitions are. And I had this recognition that I was praying that an outcome wouldn't happen versus ensuring, mm. versus creating. Mm-hmm. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, talk about martyr. Like, here I am saying, God, world, universe, whatever the fuck. And I no disrespect. It was like, help me versus 
live it up. Mm -hmm. Like fucking embrace your health, eat well, run, hike, mountain. I was doing those things, but I wasn't doing all of those things together. Mm -hmm. And I was like, fuck that. I'm no longer going to live in fear of this outcome. I don't know where that came from. I'm not going to shame it, but I'm going to ensure, do everything I can that I'm going to live a vital life. And it was like this instant switch. It had probably happened a month ago. And I'd been maintaining health and hiking and mountain biking, but I had not been like truly embracing everything I could do 